Many brands had their best sales year at the beginning of the decade of the 1990s. Ford did slightly better in the 90s than it did in the 80s, easily holding on to the top sales spot at just under 1.4 million in car sales in 1994. The Taurus would remain one of the best-selling cars in the country until mid-decade at roughly 310,000 in sales, only slightly outselling the Mazda-built Ford Escort. The newly restyled Mustang arrived that year to see 130,000 in sales, just 20,000 more than the Crown Victoria. Chevrolet would trail behind Ford, peaking at just over a million in 1995. The new Lumina would be about 220,000 of that total. But Chevy's in-body would be its top seller, being sold as the two-door Beretta and the four-door Corsica, with a combined sales of nearly 240,000. And the Cavalier would continue to sell well, reaching just under 200,000, while the Camaro would just edge out the Mustang in sales, hitting 135,000 that year. Pontiac would start the decade with a high of nearly 650,000, and would hold on to the number three spot throughout the decade in spite of a decline in sales. And Pontiac's in body the Grand Am would account for about a third of the total at over 200,000 and the Grand Prix would be Pontiac's second best seller at about 125,000. Firebird sales, however, would be down around 20,000. Buick sales would climb back up to nearly 550,000 in 1994 with the LeSabre being the top seller at close to 160,000 followed closely by Buick's 12-year-old Century at about 130000 while the big and traditional Roadmaster wouldn't even reach 40000 Oldsmobile's decline continued, starting the decade at under 500000 and finishing the decade not much above 200000 The outdated Cutlass Sierra and its replacement, the four-door Cutlass Supreme, rivaled for the top spot at around 115,000 in 1990, while the Cutlass Calais didn't quite reach 100,000. The Viper was Dodge's new halo car, but sales came from much more mundane offerings, such as the Neon and Intrepid, each accounting for about 175,000 of Dodge's peak total of 420,000 in 1996. Mercury sales peaked at over 410,000 in 1993, with not much change in where those sales were coming from. The Sable accounted for about 135,000, and the Topaz at nearly 100,000. The 90s would see a short-lived newcomer leap into the top 10 with Saturn. Technically, it only offered one model in three body styles, the SC Coupe, the SL Sedan, and the SW Wagon making up the S Series, helping Saturn come close to 300000 for much of the decade, making it a top-selling model as well as a top-selling brand. Cadillac would hold on to the luxury market until the end of the decade, almost wholly on the success of the DeVille at nearly 150000 or more than half of Cadillac's 1990 total of just under 270000 Vying for second place at Cadillac would be both the Seville and the Fleetwood Brougham, each with under 35000 in annual sales. Chrysler would be the exception, with sales peaking at the end of the decade, seeing 250000 and well beyond that going into the next decade. And this success was carried by the LH sedans, which by this point came in three flavors. The Concorde, the top-end LHS, and the sporty 300M. Plymouth started the decade at half the sales of what it had seen just four years before, reaching just over 200,000 in 1990. The Acclaim counted for more than half of that at 110,000, and most of the rest came from the Sundance's 80,000, finally outselling the still-going Horizon that accounted for the rest as car sales figures don't include minivans. By mid-decade, the Japanese had control of most of the smaller car segments in the U.S. and were quickly moving into the bigger vehicle markets. 
In the next decade, Cadillac would fall behind Mercedes, BMW, and soon after that, newcomer Lexus. And fully half of the brands on this list wouldn't survive another decade. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.